In this recording, we will be demonstrating Silverware's Bartender Label Integration. First, we are going to start with the setup into our Bartender Label Integration by going to Bartender Label Setup. On this page, you will note that Enable Bartender Label Integration has been activated, and then also Enable Logging has been activated. Logging keeps record of all requests sent to the bartender service and the responses. This might get to be a very large file if you're doing a lot of transactions. We recommend that once you get Bartender live and are confident with it, it is advised to turn off the logging. If you come up with a problem, then you can turn it back on. The per label integration can be activated. It is not in this instance because we only have one uh, bartender, bartender integration service named here, but you can have multiples per label. The bartender printer name, this is the variable name for the printer we are going to send from bartender. The bartender copies variable, this is the variable name for the number of copies. Next, we're going to look at the bartender events. So on the bartender events page, you will note a number of different events pre-populated. These are out of the box, but you can add events as you need if you have custom integration. So we're going to look at our item since we have an event set up. And we're going to look at the bicycle. So if an event has a label assigned, you can go to process and print to bartender. That button, once there is an event associated with a label, will actually have that button there. And note, we actually have one of our labels already associated to the item. Next, we're going to go to the label printers. Let's go over to our search and go bartender label printers. Note, we have one printer already signed, you can have multiple printers listed for the different labels you want to print on different printers. Finally, we're going to go to look at the bartender labels themselves. We're going to go bartender labels. So you'll notice we have three already established. So we're going to drill into our item ledger entry label. You'll notice the label code and description and the layout file name. You'll also note that this is currently enabled. So we're going to disable it while we're looking through it. Like setting up anything else in Business Central, we have identified what tables we will be looking at and below that, which fields. You'll notice in the Manage button, you'll be able to look at your table relations. For the parent and the child, you'll see the two correlating. And then you also have the opportunity to select your fields. So you'll notice we have the different fields already assigned. So if you want to add a new field, just like regular Business Central, you can select what information you want. So we're going to actually put the vendor item number if there is one. And then also, if you look on the named data source, this is the information that will send to Bartender. It can be edited if you have different field names already set up in a label in Bartender, or it will default to the table and the field. Once you're set, you would come in and you would go back to enable 
and your label is completed. Now let's look at a more complex label. We're going to look at our production output. So you'll note this is a lot more complex with some more fields and tables. We're going to disable for the time being. We'll highlight into our product order line and look at our table relations now. You'll have more information here because we have more lines and tables. One thing to note on this label, we have actually enabled has default number of copies in the general section. With that, we'll go into our item ledger entry and manage our fields. And you'll note that we have a checkbox on set value as default number of copies. So and in this instance, according to the item ledger entry, based on the quantity, it will default to that number of copies you are printing. You'll also note that it now has label per record marked here. You also have the opportunity in any of your label cards to add in a table filter. It can be based on output. It can be based on any of the different areas on the entry type, however you want to set this up. So we're going to go back and re-enable this label card. Now I'm going to show you how to actually create a new label card. So we're going to do an items to, items to, and we're going to set how many defaults, and we're going to call this items to dot btw. We're going to pretend that we have this actually set up in our bartender environment. So down here, we're going to select our items table. For our table choice. And then we're going to come in and manage and add our fields. So for this table, field number, we're going to use two. We're also going to use number one for our other item number. Then we're going to do our unit of measure. And again, our gross weight and our net weight. So it's very similar to the current item that we have, but we actually have item number two also populating on this label. Now that all of our fields are populated, we're going to come back and enable our label. You also have the option to export layout file. Now this file does not in import into Bartender, but it does give you the listing of the data source for you to help create your actual label. You also have the option to copy a label so if you wanted to, you could have an existing label created and copy it and make any modifications without having to start from scratch. Now that we have created our second item label, we need to set up which event we want it to be on. We do that by going to Create Label Printer Setup. or bartender label printer setup. So we need to add a new event. We're going to go from item. The label code is items2. And you can also look at this through the dropdown. So in fact, let's go here. You have also the option of all users, user group, or specific user. This is a way to specify who, if not certain people, have the option to utilize this new label. For this example, we're going to use all users. And now we're going to select which printer that will be utilizing this label. And as you move forward, we note that yes, our label is enabled. So now that we have two item labels, let's go back to our items. 
and we're going to look back at our bicycle. So we open up our bicycle, and we're going to go process and print to bartender, and now we actually have both of our labels available to print. Over here, if we wanted to, we can print one, and then we're going to say OK. However, if you recall, we really didn't set up that new file in our bartender. So now let's look at our logs to see what actually comes from having an error. So we're going to hit OK, and we're going to come out and go into our bartender log. So we're going to look at our last entry. And you'll see, yes, we have an error. So we're going to go into the link of response. So if we look at our response as it opens up, if you go to the right, it'll tell us what happened. It did not process because we did not have this file created in our bartender. So as we do create new labels, we do need to ensure that in the actual bartender program that you have the file created. A different label in our production order. So we're going to look at our released production order for the Ethernet cable. Note that this has already been finished. And we have a finished quantity of 500. And if you recall, we had print per quantity marked on the label. So if we want to, double check. We'll go and look at our item tracking. And you'll note that we have two different lines here posted. So we would have two item ledger entries, entries on this production journal, production order. So now we're going to go to process, print to bartender, and you'll see that it actually does a default of 250 because we have two different item ledger entry lines of 250 each. So then we can click OK and our labels will print. An example of our label is here. You will have your quantity, the net weight, and all the information that we requested. And there is the QR code also. The most significant feature with the bartender label integration is that you will be able to design labels and then be able to assign them to any printers, users, and user groups. There is a lot of flexibility with Silverware's bartender label integration.